Hello! Now I'm going to share my perspective on video essays in the light of the concerns of Various and Digibro. So Digibro has concerns about the up-and-coming video essay community. Some of them are valid, but some of them are a little doomsaying overall. But I think Digibro has... And Various, I feel, is a bit more positive about the future and ways for the medium to grow than Digibro, where Digibro is pretty much has a negative tone overall for a lot of things, but they're both meaning to have it grow, even if it grows without YouTube. More of the complaints will come from Digibro because he has more bad things to say and apparently has watched a lot more smaller YouTubers than I have. And Digibro, he's a hard audience, but I'm a hard audience too. I do think that his problems are a bit more substantial and mine are a bit more nitpicky. There are a lot of things that I don't like. I think the reliance on avatars is odd. I don't like the reliance on on-screen avatars instead of having people's faces there, but I think that's more of like a generational vlogging kind of thing. And I think there's a certain kind of Reddit culture that follows around it that I also don't like. I don't like it when they put emojis in the thumbnail. And I don't like how a lot of people snub Lindsay Ellis for how she really perfected the medium and how much she really furthered for intellectual video. But then there's also a lot of ignoring other developments in other part of YouTube as well as developments in other media. There's not a lot of respect for like news segments and documentaries. And there's not a lot of respect for other things that are essentially video essays, even though they're not on YouTube and even though they're not about cubic films. Cubic films. It's hard to talk upside down. Now, I feel like Various has the most water to his idea though, because his was very specific, where Digibro is very general. So Various said that he has a problem with how narrow the definition of video essay is. And I've never really felt this myself, mostly probably because of my background. But he comes from a background of like dealing with Reddit and the things that Reddit's niche recognizes as video essays buckle with a lot of fantastic pe people that make fantastic videos like Sean and Jen and ContraPoints and how they make video essays but they're not recognized by the video essay community because they're not about pop culture. They're about or like literal culture and YouTube. And you could say they're like meta essays. But for some reason, the production value, the theatricalness of those are not recognized as video essays. And that is annoying. And that is a problem that I feel. And that, like, I haven't fully really noted. That, like, it's a problem I can understand. But it's not one that I see. Because I stay the hell off Reddit. And I don't deal with those kind of this and that rural communities. I don't live in those lines. So where Various is very optimistic that there's a bright future for video essays if we allow it to evolve, Digibro spells doom overall, and with just about any kind of problem, Digibro thinks it's the end of YouTube and video essays on the internet. One of his oldest complaints about video essays is that they're made to make people feel smart. And this is an idea that I kind of touched on with my last video about video essays, in that I kind of agree, but also, like, you can't make people learn. Like, you can present information. In order to learn it, someone has to process it, and somebody has to go out of their way to, like, find something to read that is related to the topic, if it's not something that you can outright teach in a YouTube video, like in Crash Course. But even in Crash Course, which is a video done by the Vlog Brothers to educate people, they recommend doing outside reading and actually like reading books and stuff. So the lesson we can take away, that I've taken away, is that I think it is extremely cool if you see a video essay on a painting and then go learn about art and painting. It's not necessary that you do, even if you just appreciate that much more about paintings overall. And you can kind of take what symmetry and lines and backgrounds of a painting mean overall. But I think it's a good idea with anything to ignore or try to fight off that satisfaction. With anything you learn or watch, I think it is good to kind of resist that satisfaction that it might give you. And that easy satisfaction for most things. Like a lot of people that watches a movie review, 
they're then going to go see the movie. But like, sometimes some people watch a review or analysis and then say, we don't have to see the movie anymore, or I, I can skip it, or I can do other things. Which I think is fine on a level because there's so much you many good things to see but that's still a weird kind of reaction to it like you should watch the stuff that people do video go essays over if it seems good then there are two points that Digiro makes that i think are kind of connected and kind of close in how they formed his mind one is that a lot of video essays are pretty much just reviews but mislabeled as video essays or they tell you how a thing is good or bad and that should just be a review and the other d problem Digiro had is that a lot of video essays just take the points that someone else made in one video essay and apply it to another. I think both these things are a little bit overblown because it's going to show learning curve. It's the problem with people learning and kind of understanding the medium. When people start doing something, what they're going to do is imitation. This is true for writing. This is true for uh, making films. This is true for making YouTube videos. This is true for acting. This is true for even speech, if you go back to two-year-olds. The first thing we do is mimic. But a person's own voice is going to come through a lot of the time, despite the mimicking other people. When someone's going to start doing video essays, if they see a nerd writer thing and they're like, I could do that, and they go out and they get a video editing software and they make their little cartoon avatar, and they're all like, nah, nah. like... They'll learn their own style and their own way of doing things. They're just going to need to take time. Like, half the people on Channel Awesome... This... Sorry, this, uh, this example came to mind because of terrible things. But half the th people that started with Channel Awesome were imitating the nostalgia critic. Well, most of them each learned their own style. And had their own twist to do on eventually. And their own focus. And... You can't say that each of them are still the nostalgia critic wannabes. Man, it's hard to start a take without just walking up and approaching the camera. As you might be able to tell, I'm a very optimistic person. So a lot of times I let the idea shine brighter than the actual thing itself, which I think is why I'm so nice to a lot of movies, because the idea of what they're trying to do is communicated to me and I understand it a little bit better than their execution. So when I hear the term video essay, I take that very literally. It's a visual performance of an essay. Now, there's a lot of essays, and they vary on length and seriousness and academic level. And I think any one of them can be an essay on any topic, not just movies and anime, but also books and also culture and also YouTube. You can write an essay about anything and then you can take that essay and make it into a video. And then you have a video essay. It's not hard. Some of this comes from how old I am and how long I've been on YouTube and observed YouTube. I put my first video out in 2006, 2007. I think it might have been 2007. It was of a dragon boat being set on fire with flares. I lost. I have since lost the password to this channel and it is forgotten, but the video is still out there and it looks really crappy. But I didn't really start getting into YouTube in earnest until the Vlogbrothers about 2009-2010. They were a huge influence on me, not just because I started watching YouTube and started making YouTube videos, but also because I started reading and writing and thinking about the world in a different kind of way. And then I learned about the Nostalgia Critic and then I found Lindsay Ellis and wonderful things have happened ever since. Well, there's a part of me that saw the differences in vlogging and these video essays as they've come to be known now. There's a part of me that, that just saw a national progression and in a way, a natural stagnation because it all seemed like things the Vlogbrothers were already doing. The videos they made were scripted, even though they're about their real life and there's faces and there's performance. They script all their videos and they're essentially essays. So even before the nerd writer and uh, Nostalgia Critic, I thought people were already making video essays. It just seemed like more kind of videos for YouTube. It's a very YouTube thing. So you might recognize that my definition of video essay is a lot bigger than Various's definition of video essay too. And that is partially on purpose and partially like my fault. But I kind of recognize how huge YouTube is. Like, I see the differences in definition and in form that they're going for and that they're thinking of, but I don't see value in it. 
I don't see value in drawing this hard line here where this isn't a video essay. They're all things that are worth saying. Every video has good content for you to like think about. YouTube is a big old place. YouTube understands this in rhetoric, but not in execution. Like if they really understood it, then they would make the algorithm split off in a couple different ways and would make it kind of more programmable for more goal oriented. Just be more forward with what people want to do or what people feel like in YouTube. See, it might seem in my last video on video essays that I'm trying to fight the algorithm, but that isn't true. Algorithms learn. Algorithms can be taught. I want to teach the algorithm that there's other ways we can do. Part of the problem is that YouTube does make it so that everything on YouTube is as consumable as possible. And I think that is an unhealthy thing that they should fight against themselves. But another thing is that algorithms can be taught to be better and to do better. I don't always feel like watching the same kind of videos when I come to YouTube. I don't always feel like just consuming all the time. Sometimes I want a visual thing. Sometimes I want something more like a podcast. Sometimes I want something that I haven't seen before. And sometimes I'm looking to that I can rewatch one or two things. But my YouTube suggestions are crap because most of the time when I go to them, I don't want to watch anything there and I have to search for something that is will quell my curiosity for the time. YouTube has always been kind of nerdy. Like the idea of putting on videos online and watching them later at home or or walking around with a camera in front of yourself. The kind of needing to write something and needing to record something, that is a super nerdy thing to do. And that has always kind of been the community of YouTube. And it's kind of expanding now with like cat videos and the Paul Brothers. Paul Brothers aren't really a departure from what was here before. Sure, they're less intelligent than the Vlog Brothers. Ha ha ha. But like they're tall, they're handsome, they're a bit goofy sometimes. They probably could use a little bit more restraint, but they're welcoming to a lot of people. And for the same reason that a lot of things on YouTube persist and why communities form. And that's okay, even if they could probably play better with others. Being able to share smart, intelligent, wondrous, cool, beautiful things with others is good. And anytime we're able to do that with YouTube, that's good too. So I don't see doom for vlogs, and I don't see doom for video essays, even if YouTube's trying to push them back or the algorithm doesn't prefer them right now. Things can be learned and changed, and the thing about the algorithm is that it's not the, it kind of melds itself to its users. You can make your own algorithm better, and you can help other people improve just by sharing, commenting, um, thinking positively, thinking the best of people. So we don't have to be in the midst of doom and gloom. But you know, let's do a little bit of that. So another video boils down to, it's fine. Don't worry about it. It's fine. This is fine. Jeez. You can give me a little room to succeed by liking this video and subscribing, but also hitting the bell because hitting subscribing isn't really subscribing until you hit the bell. It's weird. It's specific.